What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to obfuscate python code so let us get right into it All right, so I do have a video on this channel already where I show you how to take a Python script and compile it to bytecode, which is also a kind of obfuscation. So maybe you want to look at that video as well. Uh, in today's video, we're just going to take the code and make it less readable using a Python library called PyArmor, which is a different uh, kind of way to obfuscate the code. Keep in mind, though, when we're talking about Python, Python is an interpreted language, and usually you just use the Python scripts the way they are. Yes, you can obfuscate the code. Yes, you can make it harder to read. Yes, you can try to compile it. But at the end of the day, it's very easy to just read your Python code to de-obfuscate it, to decompile it. So it's not the same as when you're working with C, C++, where you're actually compiling a binary file. Python is running on the interpreter, so essentially uh, you will never really obfuscate your code the way you would do it with C, C++. Just keep that in mind. However, we're still going to look at this approach here, and for that, as I mentioned, we're going to need an external Python library, and this Python library is called PyArmor, so we say pip or pip3, depending on your operating system, install PyArmor like that, and uh, in this case, you can see the requirement already satisfied. And all we need to do now is we need to create some basic Python file and then we can obfuscate it with that tool. So we can start with a very simple hello world example. I'm just going to call this main py. I'm going to say print hello world. Then I'm going to save this and I'm going to say now uh, py armor, which is now a command line tool that we installed. Um, and we're going to say obfuscate main.py. And you can see here a bunch of messages and then we see that we have this dist folder here so we can go into that and here we have also a main.py file so i can open it main.py and you can see now we have this uh code here again it's probably not too difficult to just reverse this to see what it uh, what it's doing but it's at least not that you open the file and immediately see what it's doing so Again, I cannot mention this enough when you're obfuscating your code or compiling your code in Python. Don't think that now all of a sudden if you publish this, people will not understand what your code is doing. It is not the same thing as compiling uh, a complex C project or a C++ project. Uh, but still, you can see you open that file, you don't really understand what it's doing. Even though it's just a hello world file, it looks way too complicated for you to understand. Uh, so this is how you can do that with a simple file. You can also do that with a more complicated file. So for example, let's... Uh, use the stocks py example here and for that you need pandas data reader uh, which you can install with pip3 install pandas dash data reader uh, and then once you have that you can just say import pandas underscore data reader as web and then we can also import date time as dt and we can define a start date which is dt date time 2020 first of january and then the end is dt date time now and then we can say the data frame is web dot data reader let's go with uh, facebook stock from yahoo from start to end and then we just print that data frame and of course you can do visualizations you can do whatever you want uh, but now if i just say python 3 stocks py uh, you can see this is what the script does i can now um Actually, I'm in the wrong directory now, so let me just move move the stocks file one directory up because we don't want to have it in the dist folder here. Uh, but again, if I say now Python 3 stocks py, this is what it does. And now I can go ahead and say pyarmor obfuscate stocks py. Now, one thing that you will notice is that when you say pyarmor obfuscate in one file, it usually obfuscates all the files in the directory. If you don't want to do this, you can also say just uh, pyama obfuscate. And I think the command was dash dash exact. And then stocks at py. Now you can see it only obfuscates the one script uh, as opposed to here, the two scripts. And now we can go into dist and you can see here, um, you can see here if I go stocks py this is the code and we can also see that it still works so i can say python 3 stocks py which is the obfuscated version and i still get the same functionality so again that's not the same thing as compiling we still have a simple python script 
but at least we cannot um, immediately see what it's doing. And one more thing, um, probably all of you know uh, already that you should not have clear strings, clear string passwords in your um, in your code, but still, if you have them, you will not be able to see them right away if you use that obfuscation method. So if we go ahead now and say uh, password.py, for example, and then we have a simple, I don't know, I have a string here, my password, and this is super secret password one, two, three or something. And then I have a simple um, something that the user enters entry is equal to input enter password like this and then I want to say okay if entry is equal to my password print correct else print incorrect again never do that never have your password stored in a clear uh, in, in, a, in a constant or in a string in your code this is a very very bad practice you should never do that. Uh, however, if you do that for some reason, um, first of all, if we, if I use the simple strings command, I'm going to see the whole Python code, obviously, because this is clear text. But you can see I can just go ahead and see, okay, here's a super secret password, I can just read the code. If I now go ahead and say py armor, obfuscate, pwpy, and then I go to the dist folder, and I look at this file, you can not see any of the clear strings here. Again, probably very easy to reverse the process and read it. But this is at least something that you don't see right away. But again, no matter how much you obfuscate it, never use clear string, uh, clear text passwords in your code. So let me show you one thing. This is also something um, that is a problem, maybe not the topic of this video necessarily. But if I go ahead now and I create a C++ script, a very simple one, I just say include IO stream and then int main. I just want to show you why you should not use clear uh, clear text passwords as strings in your code. So if I say now here return zero and I have a simple constant, I think I need to use, I'm not sure if I have to use it, but I'm just going to use string h here, constant std string. It's going to be uh, my password and it's going to be again super secret password one two three and then i'm going to say okay i want to have some input std string entry and then um i just want to have this and i want to say std c in so that i can enter something here and before that maybe you want to have a simple std c out enter uh, pass or enter D password. Then I can enter it and then I can say if entry is equal to my underscore password, then I can say STD, uh, I think end line should, should I do it like that STD C out? What was it? STD end line and then correct, and then maybe std end line again. And then I have the else branch, where essentially I have the incorrect message here. And that's basically it, then maybe a get char at the end. I just want to show you here that even if you compile it properly, even if you have C++, and I say now G plus plus main CPP dash O main dot out. And if I now say main dot out, this is uh, the thing so I can enter something I can then say super secret password one, two, three, and now it's correct. Maybe I did use one uh, end line too many. So one too many end lines. Uh, but still, you can see that works. And if I now go ahead and try to read main dot out, it's just completely, uh, yeah, completely full of bytes. But if I go ahead now, and I say strings main dot out, I can still see all the strings that are used here. And somewhere in here, I should be able to find there you go the super secret password. So even if you have an actual compilation, 
with C or C++, you should never use clear string passwords. Uh, you should uh, load them from a file or load them from the environment variables. Never load them, uh, never have them stored in your code. This is very important. And in Python, obviously, you don't want to do anything like that because you just, the, the whole code is a string. So you can read exactly what's happening. With the obfuscation, as I showed you here, you can at least obfuscate the code a little bit so you can make it harder for noobs at least to read the code. So this here can probably be reversed quite easily, but at least you don't open it and see right away what's happening. So uh, yeah, this is how you do that. Py armor, obfuscate Python script, and then you have an obfuscated version of your Python script. But as always, as I mentioned already three times, don't rely on that. Uh, it's probably quite easy to reverse. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.